Hi, I'm Jelani Anthony. Here at Pivot Energy, our team helps businesses nationwide navigate the complexities of solar incentives. New and long-standing solar policies make installing solar energy more affordable and profitable than ever. To receive these solar incentives, you'll first need to understand the different types of solar policies. First and foremost, are the federal incentives. Incentives such as the Investment Tax Credit, or ITC for short, can be used to guide your decarbonization efforts. Next are the state and local incentives, which are unique to your location and can be as impactful as the federal incentives. Supportive solar policies exist at all three levels, with programs such as community solar and policies such as net metering existing at the state level. In one form of energy policy, a financial tool called a tax credit exists which effectively makes each dollar spent on renewable energy development creditable against corporate federal taxes. At both the federal and state levels, you will see two different categories of policy. Legislative policy passed either through Congress or a state legislator and regulatory policy issued through agencies such as the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, FERC, or State Public Utilities Commissions, PUCs. Now that we've outlined the various types of solar policies, let's start with the federal level policies. The Inflation Reduction Act, a landmark piece of legislation passed in 2022, has significantly bolstered the financial case for businesses to purchase renewables. With a robust suite of financial policies available at the federal level, solar energy can be extremely attractive investment for businesses willing to take advantage of this unprecedented opportunity. A key component of the IRA is the investment tax credit, ITC. The ITC is widely regarded as one of the most impactful pieces of federal policy incentivizing solar and other renewable projects across the U.S. While the ITC has been around for decades and was scheduled to expire, the IRA reinstated the credits at 30%, extended their duration, and created several additional bonus credits for projects that meet certain criteria. This policy translates to real financial benefits for businesses. Lower upfront costs mean a shorter payback period on the investment. Even after the investment is paid back through energy savings, businesses can see additional long-term savings on their electricity bills by heavily reducing reliance on the traditional grid and thus fluctuating energy rates. These financial benefits ripple through the community as well. Increased solar adoption reduces strain on the grid, potentially leading to lower overall electricity costs for everyone. Curious about how to claim the federal 30% tax credit? Check out this video linked below for detailed video. The best choice for your business will depend on factors like your projected energy consumption and financial goals. Recently, the Biden-Harris administration launched the Solar for All Grants Program. These grants will be awarded to state and local governments in order to increase clean energy access to underserved communities through community solar and other clean energy programs. Later in this video, I'll cover community solar, an alternative option to on-site solar and other off-site opportunities. Putting aside incentives from the federal government, state and local governments also offer their own variety of financial incentives for renewable energy development. Some states, such as Virginia, offer property or land tax exemptions for businesses specifically installing solar panels. Credits such as these help boost solar economics. The exemptions mean businesses that install solar panels on their property may be eligible for reductions in property taxes or even taxes on the land itself. Availability can vary significantly by location, so it's important to research specific programs in your area. Beyond these financial incentives, Let's explore other key policy factors influencing business decisions to pursue solar. Net metering. Net metering can greatly reduce a business's electricity costs by allowing them to generate on-site electricity and net out their consumption. Under net metering, a business first consumes the electricity it generates on their system before purchasing energy from their respective electricity provider. In some states, you get a one-to-one -one credit for every kilowatt hour fed back while others are less generous. There are also cases where the on-site solar panels will produce more energy than the facility consumes. When this happens, surplus power flows back to the grid, reducing future electricity charges. Each state has regulations that define how much solar power your business can send to the grid. Regulations include system size limits, how that size compares to your on-site energy use, and how you're compensated for excess generation. Check out the video linked in the description below 
to learn more about net metering. While some states are shifting away from traditional net metering, there are many different types of net metering related policies, all depending on the state and the utility. That's where Pivot comes in, helping you navigate this complex landscape and identify the state-specific programs with the highest financial advantage to suit your needs. But even if net metering isn't the perfect fit, other solutions are available. Next, we'll explore Community Solar, a growing alternative to on-site solar, which is only sometimes a feasible option for businesses. If you want to stay informed on solar incentives and policy, subscribe to our channel by hitting the notification bell. Community solar programs increase distributed generation across the country, moving away from relying on centralized power plants and putting money back in subscribers' pockets, including businesses and residents alike. Businesses with roof limitations or lease agreements often can't install traditional solar panels. However, they can still reap the benefits of solar with a community solar subscription. Businesses can also purchase renewable energy certificates, or RECs for short. RECs are a type of environmental commodity that's earned by generating electricity from solar energy. They are a creditable, market-based representation of the environmental attributes of renewable energy, created and sold separately from the electricity produced by the solar system. While in some states, businesses can't directly claim RECs by simply subscribing to a community solar project, businesses can still opt for community solar programs to secure reduced electricity rates and contribute to a greener power grid. Alternatively, other states allow businesses to purchase RECs directly from community solar farms, funding their development. More on how RECs work in this video. Every community solar program is unique, with details varying by state. Some may limit the percentage of a larger corporate customer's energy needs that can be met through community solar, ensuring significant capacity for residential and low-income subscribers. Another key differentiator between community solar and utility-scale solar is project size. Utility-scale solar farms can span hundreds of acres of land. Community solar projects are typically much smaller, ranging from one to five megawatts, making them a sweet spot between on-site solar and utility-scale solar, located hundreds of miles from where power needs to be generated. The smaller size of community solar projects keeps them local, usually in the same service territory as your local utility, allowing communities to directly benefit from the project while still generating a positive environmental impact. Other aspects that vary by program include siting, how developers are awarded contracts, and compensation for the electricity generated. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you'll know when we post our next video in which we'll dive deeper into the economic benefits of community solar. While purchasing solar energy is a good step towards decarbonization, navigating the state-by-state -state maze of policies and incentives can be daunting. That's where Pivot comes in. We'll go beyond explaining the policy landscape. We are committed to helping organizations like yours achieve their clean energy goals. We stay constantly updated on ever-evolving solar policies, which helps us pinpoint the most favorable project options for your specific needs, maximizing your impact and financial return. Solar policy is fluid. Pivot will act as your intermediary, advocating for policies that benefit your business and maximize your impact on the energy transition for the communities you work in. Think innovative training programs in low-income communities or pioneering agrivoltaic programs that combine solar power with sustainable agriculture. You'll unlock a world of opportunity by allowing Pivot to help you navigate the complexities. For more information on solar policy and incentives, head to our website, pivotenergy.net, or contact me using my email listed in the description, and we'll chart your course towards a solar future. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.